So um, welcome to this first kind of uh, live session. And you can see uh, you have been around my YouTube channel. And this time I am the pleasure to add my colleague from the lovely country of Finland, Suomi. So for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Frederick. I've been running this YouTube channel for a while. I've been in this in industry for more than 20 years. And I would like to introduce Jukka. Hello everyone, my name is Jukka Hirvonen, so I started uh, to sell Tektronics uh, year 2000, so I have also been in this uh, industry for 20 years. So thank you, Frederick, for inviting me to this. Uh, yeah, it, it feels it feels like uh, we're not really sure what's going to happen. I just texted, you know, submit any questions and we will go through it as honest and funny as we can. So we were uh, trying to set up this and we tried, I don't know how many different tries we had before everything was working. And the part I, I thought was most funny is when you got your double voice. <laughs> yes, that was uh, a pretty annoying. Yeah. But it was funny at the same time, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so so uh, we, we will see if there is anything else happening here. So one of the uh, first questions we were thinking about is unrevealing the mystery of scopes. So Jukka, what was the first scope you sold? The first scope that I sold uh, was uh, TDS 3000. Do you remember how much it was sold for? Uh, you mean the price? It was yeah. about uh, 10,000 euro or something like that. It was uh, year 2000, so we didn't have a euro at that time. It was a uh, Finnish mark. Yeah. But I think it was uh, around uh, 10,000 euro. Did you do a demo or did this somebody, I, w I need a scope? Uh, it was more like um, I need a scope. And uh, during that time, uh, TDS 3000 was just introduced uh, like half a year before I started and uh, it was a break, uh, breakthrough product. So many customers just wanted to buy it. It was, um, it was nice time 20 years ago. Yeah, I, 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 and I don't even remember if it was a fluke one, two, three scope meet or whatever. So do you, do you, how did you see that the scope industry have, you know, grown since that? In terms of what is the scope, the customer were happy with the TDS 3000. I actually have customers asking for the same model today. But what I think, um, I think at that time, uh, the um, let's say the the basic scope that uh, customers were looking for uh, in in bandwidth of sense was uh, 500 megahertz, and I think uh, that was um, that was uh, the basic scope for uh, for at least 10 years. But the year 2010, I think um, it changed a little bit. So nowadays the basic scope is one gig for most of the applications. Yeah. Of course, in um, in power applications, uh, you can you can manage with uh, 300 or 500 megahertz. But uh, I think it's shift upwards a little bit. Uh, what do you think is the reason for that? Is it harder to buy equipment or you know component that is slow? Or yeah, I think it's that. And then ev everything is going faster. If you think about uh, mobile phones or yeah. tablets oh. or computers, um, you need um, you need more uh, and, more and speed. And did you feel that yourself? You know, with your brain, it's also faster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's going to uh, another direction. Yeah, yeah 20 years it, I, I was um, uh, faster, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have more bits now. <laughs> Maybe that's the age, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the more yeah. bits. Yeah, more yeah, bits. More bits. So, you know, we were uh, when we were rehearsing this a little bit, one of the questions that we come across is this, what is bandwidth? So, uh, one of the questions I got, and I, it's a little bit confusing because people tell me, "Oh, it's it's not, you know, it's not hard, it's not easy. It, it, it's it's something everybody knows." And then you try to explain to them that if if you have a sinusoidal signal at the one gig scope and you run a one gigahertz sinusoidal wave, it will shrink. And they go, like, "Why would it shrink?" Because we measure the three D point. So remember we when we spent some time talking about sample rate, 
do you remember what kind of sample rate we, we said should be the equivalent you know if you were really interested in getting a signal how many times and I got a lot of emails it seems that they have issues of, of <laughs> cutting into the event but they need okay. to go they need to go to my YouTube page and it's under live there so hopefully people can just send the link it's completely public right now so just send the link and, and they can join I can't do that so we're talking about uh, digital scopes because the analog scope just had analog bandwidth and now we have digital scope which has a digital bandwidth yeah exactly but I think um, yeah the sample rate yeah that's important but I think um, and I think nowadays it's even more important than in the past because of the speed of the signals yeah so you know Nyquist the, the guy with the candle said you need to sample two times to get out the, the fundamental frequency but if you want to measure rise time you really need to have a little bit more points on the clock yeah. for example to yeah. get that. the thumb thumb rule is that if you're if you're whatever your signal is then uh, the, the the oscilloscope should be five times faster yeah but on the pretty pretty easy rule yeah so let's say i have a <coughs> 100 gigahertz scope that should then be 100 be gigahertz yeah then you should be sampled by 500 giga samples would that be correct you know in the best of the world i don't think there's anything out there that sample that fast not yet <laughs> not, not yet but maybe in the future <laughs> what do you think about size is the scopes getting smaller you I mean we talk a little bit about mobile phones getting bigger base station it's getting smaller well, well, yes I, I think the uh, the driver here is the um, the, the screen size so and it's the same in, uh, in 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 mobile phones and in tablets that uh, the bigger the screen the bigger the um, the scope will be yeah so, so but I, I, I think it, but I think the electronics inside are, are getting smaller so the, the old equipment are much heavier on on weight yeah do you remember the scope what you you know ericsson had the label must be carried by two people yes that's <laughs> <laughs> so we also talk about the evolution of scopes uh, you know we had the, the dpo dsa uh, mso the, all that uh, you know were mdo yeah all those and suddenly we come up to this 12 bits and we come up with more channels w what do you see uh, if you were to invent a small scope, you know, or a mid-range scope, how many channels would you need? Uh, it depends on the application. How about, let's say, uh, your home brewery? Uh, four <laughs> channels. Four channels is the, um, it's um, bulletproof. Not yeah. every time, but uh, yeah. If you, if you choose two channels, then uh, most of the time you are running out of channels. So four. Four would be good. But if you, yeah it's but then it's more like uh, what is your budget and then then we are coming to the first question always what is the price is that and the then if you yeah is that so the most common question your customer ask you in the end how much is it what's the cost that's the uh, typical question yeah so if, but if then I but then yeah but then you need to discuss about the application what the customer is um is is uh, trying to do and then by doing that, you will notice that the cheapest is not the best, yeah. usually. Uh, just another question I get come up in my head. Have you ever sold scopes into very odd applications? I mean, scopes is broad, but is there something that you remember that this is, this is really odd? Uh, yeah, I think the first uh, MDO 4000 scope, which was the, um, the multi-domain, so it has, um, it has an analog uh, oscilloscope then di digital channels and a spectrum analyzer everything put into a one one box where you could see everything uh, on uh, time correlated in one view the first unit that i s that i sold here in finland went to um, um, this um, the the end application was in a barn house barn house yeah you mean those well these um where you have cows 
I, I, I don't know. Well, those, uh, let's let's call it a cow, cow but house. Yep. Cow house, yes. <laughs> a barn, a barn. I think it's called barn. So where um, where you nowadays have uh, robots for uh, milking the cows. And uh, all the cows they have a, a RFID tag in their uh, ear. So whenever the cow feels that okay, I need to be uh, milk, then uh, they go to the robot. And uh, there is lots of uh, all kind of RF uh, signals going around. So. That was the first application, and I was. Uh, it it took a while for me to um, to believe that 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 was the application, but it was. So it was a robotics. Yeah, I, I think one most awkward was uh, somebody. Uh, what do you call it when you put salmon in net in Norway, where they were breeding salmon, and then they needed a good scope. You mean the fish? Fish salmon. industry. Yeah, yeah, the fish. Yeah, and I go like, okay, do you? measure something on the salmon if the <laughs> really good salmon or you know not that good salmon and uh, in the end it was uh, for feeding the salmon so they have round nets and they throw out the food yeah and this company made a special product that measure wind and current to making sure that every salmon in the in the every salmon in the you know, net got exactly yeah. the same amount of food but how can they uh, measure that i don't know i don't i don't I, I, so probably they have a wind speed meter and then something that do like this and then they measure yes something. yeah yeah i, I don't know i mean i think yeah. it was a, an odd uh, application i think okay, what we, s yeah. we sell mostly scope to like an engineering who would like have something that works for all application yeah, quite often uh, the customers are like uh, universities where you um, where you go and then uh, you talk with the professor and uh, the application could be whatever yeah, quantum uh, physics or uh, lasers, uh, all kind of uh, kind of all kind of uh, stuff. Str cr strange things. When was the last time you sold a scope with a floppy disk interface? Floppy disk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean the uh, the 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 smaller one, not the, uh, the not the, the big bigger one. one. No, not the bigger yes. one. Okay, <laughs> the smaller one. Oh, that's a good question. I think um, PPO four thousand scope was introduced. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, I, I, I remember it because it was a Valentine Day, two thousand four or two thousand six, and before that uh, we had uh, TDS three thousand with uh, with the disk drive, and uh, and most of the competitors had a USB drive. So that was something that we were waiting for a couple of months. And I think uh, I, I was able to sell TDS 3000 anyway with uh, floppy disk because it was a really good scope. And uh, many of the customers still had uh, those PCs that you have a floppy disk drive. You but remember that's an option, almost like impossible. You could buy an option to connectivity option and there was different yes. options. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember if we ever had uh, something you can print out of the scope, a built-in printer? Yes, we had that also on uh, TDS three thousand. Was it popular? And I, uh, I think I sold one of them. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that was um, the the story goes that it was um, it was uh, designed for um, uh, Japan Japan uh, market because at that at in in Japan, everyone wanted to have a printer in their oscilloscope. Yeah, I, wor I worked for another brand for many years, and they had so you can have one, you know, you know, one of the divisions on screen to be a few meters. So, you, so if you did yeah. something wrong with the settings, we were running out of paper because it's printed out like fifty or sixty <laughs> meters of paper, and the papers were really expensive because you had to order from us. Yes. So yeah. Exactly. So. I was, uh, yeah, at, at that time I was working for a uh, distributor, so I was not working for Tektronix. So one of my uh, my other brands was uh, this uh, paper, paper manufacturer. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah. So, so you actually made more money of selling papers than selling the scope? Uh, yes, of course, I sold only one, one printer for uh, an oscilloscope, but there was lots of uh, customers, power customers that were using these, um, this uh, uh what is it 
uh, that it's drawing this line really, really slow. What is the name? Like a graph or something? Yes, yes. So I was selling paper for those. Yeah, that was um, and that was funny and, time. I don't good have that anymore. Good margin. Yes. Good margin. Yeah. So I can see on my other PC here that people are trying to. Oh yeah, now I think they're you know you know most likely will enter the event. So we talked about bandwidth a little bit in the beginning. And people yep. say, we need this bandwidth, we need that bandwidth, we don't want bandwidth. And it's still, still a little bit confusing. So I will try to use more artistic skills, which is not very good, Yuka. But if you think about frequency on the scope, and then it goes down like this, this, yeah. this is, you know, the, the you know, minus 3 dB. 3 dB. Oh, yes. I th 3 dB. Which, which is, from an analog perspective, this is, you know, really nice, yeah? Yeah. That's Pro the theory behind, yeah. But I will put you to test. I, 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 I know you don't like this, but I'll put you to the test. Okay, I need to go soon, so. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so you know, the time I wanted, this is time. Um, yes. And it's one second. This is what I need to capture. It's, it's like se second, it's not Swedish Krona now. I, I'm confusing yes, things. Yeah. Swedish Krona, yeah. A and the frequency I'm looking at is five gigahertz. Yes, so five times that, 25 gig. So you would assume 25 giga sample. No, 25 giga. Hertz oscilloscope would measure that um, below minus three dB. Oh, so it's right. But what about sample rate? Oh, uh, sample rate. Mm. Yeah, let's say twenty-five. You need to, you know, lot of things on the edges. Twenty-five giga sample per second. Yes. How many scopes is there available on the market that has twenty-five gig memory per channel? I think every uh, manufacturer has uh, at least one. <laughs> Except us. Uh, <laughs> more than one we gig. Have. More than one g 25 giga points. Giga sample per second. Yeah, yeah, but I'm thinking about the memory. So if you want to do this. Right oh, now, okay, memory, yes. yes. Th this one, I mean, it's 25 giga points. Yes. How would you do this? What is your solution to this? I, I, I just want to have USB 3, which is a fundamental of 5 gig. 5 times time is 25. We need 25 gigahertz. You know, 25 gigahertz can be represented. Yeah, I mean, anyway. So, so what I'm saying here, this is something that people overlook from time to time, is memory. Because if you don't yep. have enough memory, you cannot sustain the higher sample rate for the duration of time, which then limits the sample rate. Yeah. So if we have one giga sample available, I think this is what we have today. You know, this is, I think it's one giga sample of memory. Yeah. Yes. Or giga points. I can t try to put giga points. Oh, it's not memory. So we have w one giga points, but we can't run twenty-five giga sample, can we? We, I mean, because that will require twenty-five times. So in this yeah. case, one other thing we can do is we can say that, oh, we don't do that. We run this at one giga sample. But if we run yes. it at one giga sample, we will not be able to capture the five gigahertz. No. Yeah, you are right. But I think this is a stupid example, isn't it? A little bit, yes. <laughs> But I think that people overlook that from time to time. They overlook memory as an aspect of digital bandwidth. Because if we had zero points of memory, let's assume zero points of memory, we ca I could buy a 300 gigahertz scope and still wouldn't be able to see anything, you know, or one point. And yeah, I exactly. So, so I've seen that from time to time that people are a little bit kind of you know, they don't always know how long records they need to play. Yeah, I think the um, the biggest challenge nowadays is to explain, um, yeah, 
this is a good topic because in the past, like 20 years ago, uh, your oscilloscope has uh, had a, like uh, two kilos or uh, oh, I'm trying to yeah. ten kilos memory, so oh. like ten ten thousand uh, measurement points. Yeah, that's... then it was easy. Like TDS three thousand, it, it's uh, one gigahertz uh, bandwidth, and then uh, you had five giga samples per second, and the memory length was uh, ten kilos, so ten ten thousand points, and that's it. Yeah, so you could run it, you you could run it full uh, quite fast. Yeah. And nowadays, memory is not a, a problem. I I think well, I I think um, in many times, you have too much memory, then you don't uh, think about your measurement. You you want to record everything, so and then the challenge is to find something uh, uh, important from that. Um, Yes. Mass of uh, memory. Yeah. So if, if you think about how we do it, our scopes that we have a standard setting. You know, there's a standard setting. You press Auto Set and you get some memory. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want more memory, you need to just tell it. Why aren't we always running max? Because that wouldn't be a good idea, wouldn't it? Would it? Or yeah, but you are you are usually not um, not uh, measuring uh, at full speed or the maximum speed. So it depends on your uh, what you are trying to uh, do. Yeah, it's like in your car, you are not um, putting the full full speed uh, instantly. Well, you are, I know that for sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm a fin <laughs> Finnish guy, so yeah, of course. Rally guy. So if you if if think you know, just leave it, you know that you know the, this part. So probes have they evolved anything? Yes. I think nowadays the biggest uh, biggest challenge is to um, to get a really good uh, measurement point. So you could have a really good scope, uh, big uh, screen, all all memory and all that stuff. But then the biggest challenge is how to to connect into your uh, your device. I'm just asking in the chat what is the best probe. Let's see if I can get some uh, some answers. What the best? What is probe? the best probe? I think uh, P sixty one thirty nine A, or B nowadays. Is, is that the best probe? I think that's uh, the the most common. It's like um, overall probe, passive yeah. probe. But whoever in the old passive probe, whoever fiddled with the compensation. That was a pain, uh, time to time. Yeah. And that's something that most of the. Uh, most of the people just uh, forget to do so to compensate the probe uh, correctly. So are you getting some uh, questions there? Or? Uh, nobody wants to ask any, any questions, so that, that's fine. So, so, but I'm looking at this because one of the things that I've seen, oh, it's like if you have a scope with one gig and then you add a probe at one gig, you know, what's the bandwidth here? You mean the uh, system uh, bandwidth. system bandwidth so i think that you know normally we, we tend to use this as a system bandwidth but that's not always clear is it yeah you are right yeah so you know it, it would be nice if we have a one gig probe and a one gig scope but the one gig probe actually goes a little bit higher to support one gig at minus three db but not everybody in the industry does it so you can end up with a yeah that's that's true it's also um, uh, one one uh, cost saving uh, thing for some of the customers to uh, to not buy um, electronics probes or or whoever the manufacturer is or the big big brands and they are buying uh, some. Um, yeah, we got an answer here. We, we have an answer. Okay. Andrea says that his best probe ever is the TPP one thousand. And then actually, we have yes. so oh now yes. we have somebody who's actually going into real deep because he says a, T a T I M you know the one T I have no glasses T I M T I M what is that is that ice of you ah yes somebody throw it in icy will okay so we have a passive pro tip of one thousand it's great low loading you know it's you don't T I V H T I V. Oh, where's my glasses? H. Yeah, I need to look at this. 
T-I-V-H or M? T-I-V-M-1-L. So it's a one meter cable on that one. That's the best probe. No, it's one gig and uh, it has the long... Uh, oh, it's a 10 cable. meter. It's a 10 meter. 10 meter cable, yeah. Sorry Let's for that. Uh, Let's go Google and check it. Yeah, Billy's domain. <laughs> That's the kind of an interesting answer. One say that the passive probes that give us one gig bandwidth, you know, you don't have to fiddle with the compensation. It is one and it's very low loading. It's less than four picofarad. Yes. And then somebody throws in the most complex, the coolest probe we ever did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Depends on the application. Uh, that's probably one of the few occasions actually sold the probe for higher price than the scope. Yeah, actually, that's um, that's common common with these um, these kind of uh, okay things, and it's also one of the drivers for uh, for high end scopes. If you are talking about uh, 20, 30, 50 gigahertz scopes, yeah. so, so let's go. Let's, if the yeah, let's go, let's go and just check the probes out here. If we we can click it here also. Oh, and I got Arne Wixom, of course. The system bandwidth square root of scope. You know, times two plus probes times two. You're right, but I wanted to simplify. I'm sorry, Arne. My fault. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> so let's talk about which one is this? Where is it? Is uh, is it? At the first one. This one. Eyes of you. This one, yes. I, I, you know, I was always a little bit against calling this a simple probe. This is a system. Would you agree? It's a system. Yes. Yeah. It's a it's a probing uh, system. Yes. And it's a little bit hard to do a demo. I think it's a little bit hard to get because one of the beauties of this, you need to have a really good access point. And if you exactly. don't have a good access point, you can't really see the benefit. It's like if you ever, ever used our TPP 1000 with the standard long lead, which I have somewhere here. Yeah. You know, with this lead, the long one. Uh, yeah. that's not giving you really one gig. You need to have a small, it is ground, you know, so the same thing with this, but this is more sensitive. Yeah. The ground loop is something that, uh, some of the customers are asking, can you, can I have longer ones? Oh, you can have as uh, long as you want, but the band, yes. with it, everything will be yes. bad. Everything and that's a good question from a customer because then you can, uh, then you can, uh, educate them a, a little bit. And yeah. it's, it's not, uh, it's always a good, uh, good thing to have that kind of uh, discussions. So your favorite probe was the old P? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, P6139. Uh, but that's like um, basic, basic. I like this probe. Maybe I'm, I'm a little yeah, bit that, odd. That's a new one. That's a new one. I like this a lot. It says power rail probes. I thought in the beginning it was an integrated uh, current uh, meter and a voltage meter who lifted up and measured the power instantly but of course it's not it's a it's a really nice offset probe uh, so ha have you uh, have you tried this live ever this one me yeah yes yeah i have i have tried uh, uh with a couple of customers yeah and, and the feedback must be wow isn't it it is a wow yes yes definitely and, uh, and then the second point is uh, the price, and then it's an, another wow. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in well. a, in a sense of uh, of your application, if you if you read that, uh, if if you need that um, uh, those specifications to be able to to, to work with your uh, uh, the, device, then uh, you don't see price that. is usually the, a second. Uh, yeah, you will see the discussion. secondary thing. Yeah, but now people are dis I would try to go this one. They're kind of looking at how you measure the system bandwidth. I thought I started something really, really nice here, but we'll we'll see if it, it's still nice. Let's see in the end if they can agree. Can you see it? Yeah, but I I'm I'm not able to read that. It's it's really. Uh, Put your glasses on. No, I have them, but oh, I think I, I need a, a microscope. Yeah. So if the resolution is not good. Yeah, if, if if you look at we go back to scopes, so I will ask the team the favorite scope, your favorite scope. Your favorite scope. And this is going to be a trickier one because some of the older models have been around. You know, you, you get familiar with, you know exactly how they work. And some of the newer is quite new. We have a lot of scopes, don't we? 
yeah we have uh, I think we have one scope for every uh, every customer I'm not sure if we are missing something uh, I don't think so going of course it's usually yeah so going through I think yeah. we have now really good uh, portfolio of scopes yeah so and the new ones uh, four five six series they are so so Arne is just saying his favorite scope is the MSC 64 and I'm Two, yes. two th thinks the MSU 64 is the best. I, 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 oh, Bill is to my MD on 4104C. That's going to be a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? The MD of 4104C or 64? Pros and cons. We just talk open. Pros and cons. Yeah, I think uh, the. Let's say a basic scope uh, like 4000, MDO 4000. It's a it's a good product. We have had it for uh, for a long time, and I think it's a uh, it's really good scope. Okay, the RF performance is good. You can buy yes. a one gig scope and get a six gig RF input. Yes, and digital channels. And digital channels. Most of the um, most of the um, standard. Uh, yeah, you can't. You, you can even connect it to uh, SignalView PC. It's not that fast, but it, you can do it. Yeah, it's a basic, basic scope. Basic scope. So, when we introduced the, the MSO six series, or you know, the six series, in the beginning, we didn't have the the time domain stuff. We didn't have the RF really ready. Yeah. And now with the latest box car, we're getting very, very close to the 4 series. The problem is the price level, I guess, because the MDO 4 series, yes. you can buy at a lower bandwidth on the analog channels and still get a 6 gig uh, with up to 3 gig modulation bandwidth. I think our maximum right now is like 2 gig on the 6 series. Yes, yeah. So from a price perspective... Oh yeah, I think ah. we go back to the... Yeah, we go back to the um, uh, 10,000 euros that I sold my first scope 20 years ago. Yeah. I think uh, with 10,000 euro nowadays, you can buy a um, oh, we can we can MDO see We 4, can 000. see because the price is in our web page. You can buy a 3 series, a 4 series. Yeah. Oh, look at this. I, I think I never sold one of those. And then we go up 3, you know, 3. Uh, let me see. Yeah, 6. Yeah, that, uh, that's oh, the... Oh, then, uh, then it starts to be a little bit more expensive, 13. Contact us, 25, etc. Contact us. Most of them, they, you know, they would like us to be contacted. So, so one of the things here that is a little bit misleading, this is my personal opinion, doesn't reflect anything else, that, but this starts at 1 gigahertz, and the 1 gigahertz standard model is 24,500. That's the standard model. If you go to yes. the 5 series, I guess the pricing here is actually the price for 350, and, and, you, and so on, so on. But could you upgrade bandwidth on the 4 Series MDO4? I don't think you could. MDO4000. Yeah, could you upgrade the bandwidth? No. So no. you kind of you kind of stuck. Yeah. I will ask another question. Uh, what should I ask the audience? The favorite uh, software, maybe? Favorite software? Well, what should I ask them? It seems that we have a clear yeah. winner on MSO64. What should I ask? Uh, we have uh, we have gone through probes, not all of them, scopes, not all of them, not all of them. Uh, what would be good question? That is a good question. <laughs> Let I will ask it. What is a good question? Yes. That's a good question, an open question. Oh, you can upgrade the bandwidth on the RF side, but I'm not sure if you can do it on the analog channels, Yuka. You went, oh, uh, you, he, th there's one, but it went from 500 to one gig. Oh, uh, uh, yes, yes, I yes, can't yes. Yeah. I can't remember that. I can't remember yeah. that. Oh, Spectrum That's correct. View. Spectrum View. Should we talk about Spectrum View? versus MDO4. Uh, Arnes asked Spectrum U, yes, that's um 
that's really good uh, is, is that good I, I I'm not yes. sure I'm not sure if that's good so here I have um, you know prepared the 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 six series and I will ask uh, you know <laughs> the, oh okay you can upgrade I know that you can upgrade from three gig to six gig but I was a little bit unsure about the analog bandwidth scope so Billy's domain you're right I'm sorry yeah let me see it's uh I can check it out. Yeah, um, no worries. So, so uh, you know, hopefully you will see a scope screen. This is the scope screen of MSA4. So I will ask you, can you figure out what is on channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four? I need to say something. What's on channel one? Channel one, two, three, four. Let's see if they can figure it out. So are you asking me or uh, I'm just asking the them. rest of the guys, you know, okay So how many guys do we have online? Uh, awake is Girl. half of them uh, There's 33 concurrent viewers. I don't really know concurrent viewers. Okay. Is. It's going up a little bit lately I don't know if people have you know missed the time slot or something But at least they're in and looking at this. I think we're gonna leave this You know, I'm gonna save this video for somebody who wants to see this <laughs> afterwards yeah yeah we can watch it we can watch it yeah <laughs> so so um, I asked them what is on channel one and it's on the top and channel two and three do you know what's on channel one two three four Yuka well, I cannot see it really well is that because of the yeah, the resolution is not should, really should, should I go a little bit like like this or no channel one is um, that's an analog uh, signal and then you have digital channels and is that channel channel three the red one uh, I don't know so I can actually run it here so what is channel three and we have channel one okay channel I think channel two is actually the digital Okay. Uh, so I will just uh, remove those, uh, you know, un unused stuff, and uh, we can run again a little bit like this. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it seems that uh, my remote scope this is just stopped. Oh, they don't see all channels. Hmm. Yeah, and then when you run it, uh, the the resolution of the picture is going. Uh, okay. Uh, can I uh, do something like this then? Just m move it over here. I don't want us to sit in the yeah, middle. Yeah, try it. Let, like this? Is that better or? Yes. Yeah, now now we can see the batches. Yeah, that's good. But I cannot go down here, can I? I can. Oh. Uh, user preferences. Oh. So what is the software that you are, you are using? Are you connected directly to no, the No, I'm just or? doing a, a, a remote desktop. So I'm calling so I can share the screen. Okay. And the scope is? MSO 64. 64. So four let's, channels. Do, let's do the font yeah. size as big as we can. And I will try to move this up a little bit. Can I do that? Like this. Uh, hopefully, everybody can see something. Yes. Can make it a little bit smaller. So, th this is kind of, uh, you know, what I've said. So, up here, uh, I will reveal the answers. You know, channel one, I put a BNC antenna. And uh, channel, ah. channel number two here, we can make it, maybe we can draw it like this. Channel number two is just uh, a clock. Okay. Ch uh, channel number three is uh, with the di differential probe. It's very simple, differential probe on 100 base Ethernet. Okay. And the last one I'm looking at, because this one, channel number four, I I it's the high bandwidth probe, my favorite probe to look at really details of a power supply. So I connected it to one of my computers just to monitor uh, voltage. Okay. So sh should I show you cool stuff that nobody in the meeting knows anything about? What you can do with this today? It's really cool feature. So uh, let, yes, let, me, le let me remove some of this. So we only have this one. So of course I, I need it. I have it a little big bigger so I can get the run and stop. Otherwise, we're we're lost. So, 
So if I run this one, this is the BNC. This is actually from a v, you know an antenna picking up everything in, in, in the room. Okay. Uh, let's assume I would like to trigger on the VLAN burst. And you look at this, you go like, uh, maybe we can do something. But it's not <laughs> really easy to, to trigger on this one. So we implemented a few years back, we, we implemented this uh, uh, display over frequency domain, yeah? Yes. Yeah, you remember this one. This is, you know, I would say a light version of the MDO4K, a light version. But the spectrum control is a little bit different. So we, we go in here and we go to 2.44, 2.44 gig. Why don't why don't I say two four four gig? Enter. And do you see an activity? Most likely yes, because the ba the I mean barely yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's jumping something over here. Do you see that? I can actually make this uh, uh, spectrum view max hold so we can see what's going on. So from time to time you can see these bursts. This is the VLAN bursts. But yes. how am I to trigger one from the other? That's going to be tough. So what I do is, this is a secret trick I have. We can actually take the Bluetooth if I able to move this, but I can't. Why can't I move it? Maybe I need so what to. are you trying to move? I'm trying to move this one, but um, it doesn't really like me to move when I'm not in full picture. So I need to do like this. And it doesn't work. Lovely. OK, that's the end. Oh, I know, I know <laughs> why. It's my fault. I'm bad because I had this one open and now I can move it. And you see there's a Bluetooth. Yes. Okay. There's a Bluetooth coming over here from time to time. Yep. So what we do is we, we you know narrow the bandwidth down so we can have something like this maybe. Just looking at if there's something coming. Oh, now the Bluetooth is gone. Oh, there it is. So if I was supposed to trigger on this one, that's going to be challenging using the analog trace down here, wouldn't you say, Yuka? Could you? Yes, could you, could extremely you? difficult. Yeah. So what you do instead, you use one of the new features we have, and you go to Spectrum View, and you have something called magnitude versus time. I normally the manual you go for this power log instead, and when you have it, you do you really see anything down here? I can move this up a little bit, so you don't really see anything, do you? No, and the, uh, the the big picture quality is not the best one, so, no, so I can barely see. Uh, yeah, so anything there. Yeah, so it's really down here. If I move it, you can see it's really no power. Yeah, now but I can see it. Yes. You can see a trace. Yeah. So what I maybe I can do now from the trigger system, instead of selecting, you know, the analog as a trigger, I can select the the uh, the magnitude versus time on this filtered area, which is a span of five megahertz. So if I go to yep. the trigger menu here, oops. And you can see it's channel on. It allows me to trigger on magnitude versus time. Okay. And then we can put this in. Oh my God, I need to move this down again. I need to trigger on on uh, more than whole off in, in uh, oh, normal, unhappy. Okay, so this is it. And then we run this one. Nothing will happen un un until I, I move this down a little bit. And you can see now I'm actually triggering on the actual event so if we go up a little bit 5 db i don't know where is that, where did it go so here you can see i'm actually triggering on that event and not triggering. okay yeah so this is a bluetooth yeah this is a bluetooth so uh maybe i can put it down a little bit so we have a little bit more stable trigger so this is bluetooth it's still very short but if we go up a little bit in time you can see that this is the bluetooth event Yes, I can probably wow. fi fine tune it a little bit. So this is a Bluetooth burst I'm triggering on. And I imagine triggering on this analog, which has a eight gig bandwidth. It's impossible. Would be, it would be impossible. Would be yeah. nightmare. The cool. Oh yeah, if you well, if you work one week and then then you can do it. But for you, yeah. So uh, I'll just move it over here, and then we you know a little bit uh, longer time frame. So I stop this one. What I'm trying to do now is go back to this one and the spectrum view to sh show frequency versus time. Uh, and we have frequency versus time here. Hmm. So I need to set up a squelch. Shit. So what I was hoping to accomplish was uh, something that is not that easy. So there's a squelch here. 
that I can put put down and I need to move it down 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 hopefully we'll see something soon in which uh oh in the lower case which okay I don't even know it goes too slow let's have 10 oh it's too much so we go up again oh <laughs> 20 20 and maybe 30 50? the 30 and th uh, I don't so what I was hoping for and that's probably because I'm not really centered so I'm gonna move this guy precisely in the center and then run it again you will be able to see the decoded data oh okay yeah, now when you stop it, the, um, the the picture quality gets better. Yeah, I know. But when you are running it, it's like uh, yeah. So we have these three we have these three traces, and the question is, if I should do it like this, I'm just going to check. Yeah. So n now you can see here in the bottom uh, with the frequency. Oh, can make it a little bit bigger. Do you see this? Yes. Do you know what that is? This is this is my burst. This this is my Bluetooth burst that I connected. That's the Bluetooth burst. Yes. Yeah. So if we were go, oh, let's try this. And I can go into zoom. Can I zoom this? I don't know. Yeah. You can see the zoom here. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, what if I told you that nobody, nobody on this call knows a secret? Hmm. I know. What about making a bus now? What? I will make a bus. Not a bus for people, but the digital bus. A ah, bus. Ah, okay. Uh, a, bus. a bus. So a bus. add, the new, unfortunately, we don't have Manchester coding, but for just for, and we do an RS-232. You see the source here? Could be yes. frequency versus time. Ah, okay. And then we have, of course, a threshold that should be zero. Uh, and the baud rate should be probably some, I don't know. I don't know the baud rate of this one. I think it's okay. think quite fast. But it's decoding. It's giving you something. Yeah. Shh, shh, don't tell anyone. Shh. Okay. It's secret. So, of course, this, <coughs> this is just a simple way for you to show that I'm taking a normal scope, you know, not looking at the analog anymore. I'm capturing a Bluetooth burst from my from antenna. I'm able to trigger on it, and I'm able to do the FSK modulation, which is this case, and you will be see some some data. So if you look okay. at where's the bus again? Here is the bus, and I'm sure you can get to the bus, and you can have the bus and bus and waveform. So this one should actually represent. Yeah, it gives you zeros and uh, ones. Yeah, they give me something. I mean, th it's not Manchester coded. So if you go for uh, the result tables here and bust the code and add that, uh, you know, you can click here and you should be able to zoom in these positions. Don't, okay. tell, don't tell anybody about this. Okay, this is something, um, is this a new feature or? No, it's a secret feature. Secret feature. Well, I think, um, yeah. Maybe one one topic that we can discuss is the uh, boxcar releases that we have. Yeah. So what is a boxcar? So what is a boxcar? Yeah. Uh, you probably not. I will try. Yeah, but this is uh, th this is something uh, that uh, came with the li latest uh, boxcar. Or when did you when did you find this? So uh, the latest box call was two, 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 three weeks ago. They added this yes. feature of triggering either on magnitude or frequency. And there's three different triggers you can use. Th three valid triggers for these this different traces. I'm not sure. So the first three, edge, pulse width, and timeout as a valid trigger for the RF part. Those three triggers. Yep. But I was surprised to find that it was also a valid source decoding yeah I didn't know that and it's I don't think anybody actually run this 
So I'm not sure if Bill is still on the call, but I, 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 I would imagine that you have a hard time to, to, to do this on the MD4. You can do that with Spectrum View, uh, Signal View PC, sorry. So we are on Boxcar 10 now. Yes. So I think it would be easy to, or I think we know what a boxcar is, but uh, if there are viewers that don't know what is a boxcar, why, why we are talking about boxcars? I don't know. You're, you're, you're mentioning it, so I, I leave it to you <laughs> to explain. <laughs> well, how can I say it? It's um, a boxcar is um, a software release that we are, um, we are um, uh, releasing every quarter since the, um, the start of um, when we introduced um, MSO5 or 5 series uh, oscilloscope. Then we had a boxcar number one uh, two years ago. No, it was three years ago. Or was it last year? Yes, three years ago. Yeah, just one per in quarter. In the summer, yeah. So there's four yes. quarters per year, so. Yes, so it's, um, it's an idea that we have a, a hardware platform and an oscilloscope and then we are introducing uh, more uh, features in every uh, boxcar release is that a good explanation or you want to add something i just ask them if they understand or not no so oh, it's a finnish guy talking so nobody understands no no so so the boxcar is i mean i like the idea and we have you know, you and me work with electronics. We have a very limited disability. We know what's cooking, but the end result is not always shared with us uh, until it's actually released. Because if it doesn't make quality, it won't, won't be released. But, yep. but it's a good progress. So four times per year, there will be added features for free, things that they added, or there will be uh, options to add more stuff to it, like more serial decoding or other type of packages. Yep. That's the idea. So it's a continuing process to, to make our scopes better. Yeah. And it's also a voice of the customer based. So um, whenever a customer has an idea or a need for um, something new, they can uh, request us to, to, to have that in our scopes in the future. Yeah. So so uh, I it's guess a continuing process. Yeah, I don't think there's too much other things going on right now. There's no chat. Uh, nobody's asking any questions. So we give a few minutes more to talk about something completely irrelevant. Irre okay. Uh, what w what would that be? <laughs> oh, it's your idea, so it's your question. <laughs> so no, so so, so scope, so more than scopes, is easier to connect would you say to a PC? Yeah, nowadays, yes. And I think uh, also nowadays, uh, you were mentioning about the, the channel number, how many channels, and I said four, but now we have a possibility to go to six channels or eight channels. And uh, also we can build up uh, bigger systems with uh, more channels than eight, so. I think the maximum uh, channel account is uh, how much on a system? I don't know. I would say a thousand. It's depending. Thousand. How, it's depending on how you set it up. But maybe a few thousand channels would be doable. But and that's probably for the one-off experiment where you shoot something and you have a bunch of sensors you want to do something. Yeah. But uh, for normal engineers, they still would like to have a scope that they can operate in front of or you know operate remote. So, so were you happy with the release of this tech scope? Yes, that's actually an ec excellent uh, software. So what I and, and and it's still under under um, the <laughs> we are. It's not under con construction, but it's uh, it's um, we are adding features to it. Yeah, so I will try to uh, you know in the link description of this video add something we talked about today, so you can just look at yeah. it. But that's that's a quite nice feature. I like it. Uh, you can remote control scope. You can because I have some customers asking, you know, if you remote control a scope like I do, and I press save, save a setup or save something, everything is yeah. saved on the local scope and not on my PC. 
So this is the first time ever really we have something that I think is stable enough and it works for you to save the waveform at your local PC or your end destination. So you can share yes. it from there. I think that's a kind of... This is one application that we have um, a customer here in Nordics that uh, because nowadays people are working from home, they, some of them are not allowed to go to the, to the office or to the lab. So they are quite often asking, uh, would it be possible to, to remote control the scope and then get the, um, get the, um, the data out from the scope and then uh, have it on your own PC for an analyze. And that's, uh, that's possible to do. I think in the past it was uh, so that you could take, um, you could take um, um, a remote control of your scope on the lab, but then uh, if, you, if you save it, then uh, you need to have a USB stick in, uh, in the lab. So then somebody needed to go and, uh, and take the, uh, the USB stick there. So, so we got a question from Arne, Wh which model can we remote control? You, you, and I guess, Arne, you mean remote control in a way you can get the, 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 the real data saved on your PC? Uh, I think I, I would go with say, three, three, four, five, six. I don't know about seven yet. Uh, I have, yeah. I haven't tested that, but I think there is a... If five, you, six, sure. Four, five. Because we also have Kickstart. Have you seen Kickstart? Yes. So Kickstart supports some of the scope for the same features, but that's that, that's for more data collection. I mean, the beauty of this box is you can actually do analysis. You can do d you know decoding. You can do whatever you want on the offline, and we can do that on other file formats, which is not the pr pr property of Tektronix as well. But in the remote yep. session, uh, in the remote session. The way it works, you have a, 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 you know, I think it's an option to actually set it up so you control the scope. Now uh, Arne said yes and no, and I'm co totally confused. <laughs> uh, so four, five, and six, the three is not support. I don't know, but there is a plan. Yeah, three, three, I'm not sure. No, so there is a, a plan to implement TechScope. It used to be called TechScope Anywhere. It's a little bit confusing, but TechScope is the new one. And I think the plan is to implement all scopes in the future for that release. I think I saw yep. that on the roadmap, which is not that strange. Not everybody has a, a you know, four, five, and six. But I like it, and, and, and some people like Kickstart. But the problem is Kickstart, you can't really do an eye measurement. You cannot draw an eye. Yeah, TechScope is for, uh, for an oscilloscope, and then uh, Kickstart is for um, a lot of other equipment yeah. also. So, so Yuka, I, I will show you my favorite feature on the, you know, on the six series, which works on the okay. five and the four, and it's something that we we tend to to show customers. Uh, you know, they they want to do reports, they want to do all that stuff. Uh, three is not supported, correct? Thank you, Arne, for that one. Uh, it's good to have somebody who's awake on the call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you, if you go here to to, to file. And, and you can go to save as a lot of people you know go for this uh, you know uh, report blah 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 and you save it and it will open up a report and you go through blah 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 pdf you know you can look at this probes what's unconnected you know measurement results uh, my decoders my you know i mean it, it's quite simple most people don't want to do this but they also want to be sure that they save the setup yep so i don't know how many customers are told go here save us and they go in and save the setup and i said don't save the yep. setup save the session please save the session why should i say it's it's not the setup so i will save this one i will do a default setup it's successfully saved so i do, do a default setup so when I go and file and do the recall of this session, which I don't even remember the name now, I have a few sessions here, uh, and then it disappears. Recall, can it come back again? Uh, session, we we'll try it again. Dun 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 dun. Here it is. Recall, hopefully it's the right one. It will Should recall. Be. Not only will it recall, recall the setup, 
but it actually recalled the date as well. Yeah, everything. So, so everything on that session, yes. So, so I think this is a very, very strong tool. So if I press run now, I will be able to decode live what's going on on my Bluetooth. Let, let's try it. I stopped. Yeah, that's really good. So I that's think a cool feature. Yes, it, it's very useful at least. And if you're, you know, in your lab, you have routines for, you know, what kind of standard measurement, or you did the measurement, and then, you know, a few months later, you going back and, you know, verified that, you know, something is gone or something is changing. I think that it's just the way we call it. We call it a session. We sh if we named yeah, it exactly. the setup session or something else, people would probably understand more. I think this is one of my my favorite topics when I talk to people who already have our equipment, making sure that they actually use that. Yeah. So y then you understand the question I'll, I will tell you now is, what's your favorite feature? My favorite feature? Hmm. Or I will ask. Uh, what would I say? Please. There are so many. Yeah. There are so many. Please tell me your favorite feature on the MSO six. So I think this is the. I last think this session session is one. I think this is really good. So. What's your favorite? I think the spectrum view. Spectrum view. Function on the three, four, five, and six. So, are you getting any questions or? No, no, it's just you know a, a few, a few of them. So, I mean, we were, we were correct. So how many, how many, how many participants we have? Uh, oh, um, Arne like callouts. I think that's a, that's a good, good point as well. Call out. Call out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do a call out. Uh, let's do a call out. What should I call out? I should call out this one and do a call out. And oh, double tap to edit. Oh my God. Delete. Double tap to edit. Okay, note is BCC Finland. And the format should be really big. Yeah. We take the biggest. So we can <laughs> really see it. It's a little bit commercial for BCC, which is our technical partner in Finland. Yeah. BCC Finland. Okay, and the settings would be uh, for bookmark, or uh, we have this arrow somewhere. But uh, b the bookmark is kind of cool because you can select where to put it on. Yes. So you can have the analog, um, normal frequency, or magnitude versus time, and then there's the dB. I mean, so that's yeah, the that's really. We should actually change. And the then if you if you change the position, then uh, yeah, the color should be Finnish. People are more like white. No. What's the Finnish uh, color? White and blue. 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 White and blue. And then we can remove this zoom. I don't think we need it. So we're measuring over here. It's minus sixty six point six nine six dB. Wow. You can actually move it a little bit so it's a little bit clearer. Oh, we have uh, Samuel say his. F it's, it says virtual trigger, but I think it's meaning visual trigger. And that visual, is yes. Yeah, this is something I, I, you know, I'm eager to see this at one point. Is where we go into, uh, you know, we have this more button, the, the you know mask and visual trigger. But the visual trigger, you know, I think that they're cooking something because the visual trigger, yes, will work over here, or it will work over here. But if I try try to do any other trace, it won't work. So there's still some of the traces in terms of the spectrum view doesn't work. But w wouldn't that be cool to draw a, draw a box on a frequency? I like that. Yeah, it's basically you draw a box or whatever shape uh, box on the screen, and then uh, the you tell to the scope that uh, trigger when the signal is on that uh, that the box or it's not there. So then trigger. It's it's quite easy easy to use yeah. trigger. So I used it for for timing synchronization time time when we have uh, multiple channels that needs to be aligned at a certain you know 
and we want to do capture the worst cases we use swift Fear trigger is good enough and also for some from ddr yep. or lpddr4 if you have a really noisy lpddr4 setup you know separating reads and writes with reflections visual trigger can do your job for you to just separate yeah so we had call outs we had virtual triggers uh and your favorite was you cannot pick one of those uh spectrum view that's something uh but that's already on screen yeah it's already on the screen but that's something that you can um, if you have four channels you can have uh, four spectrum views now we have only one if yeah. you have eight channels scope uh, then you can have eight uh, spectrum views yeah and the that's the really unique yeah and the only thing they don't share you know that you can you know you know can drag them in time uh I guess this is something that you know. Uh, I'm sure that if if Billy still is on the call, Billy's domain is, is still on the call. He he knows that this is the feature that everybody likes. So if you go on and, and uh, to have a little bit of a, what I'm doing now, I'm trying to change the horizontal scale. What? I di I sorry. I had to delete this box. Delete this. Delete. Uh, delete call out. So. I can change. So if you have this a little bit longer, and I do a preview again. Stop. So this box actually, this box here correspond to where we do the FFT. Yes. So if you, if you drag this one around here, some people think it's you know it's a nice feature, but sometimes it's like. So th this can be separated on the different channels. The center frequency can be separated with it. But uh, there is some s changes like resolution bandwidth because there's the same sample clock tables here. What they say? Yeah, and I think one 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 uh, thing also, it's it, which is quite cool, is that you can you can change the um, the how big the, um, the 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 letters are. Oh, uh, it is good for for, us, for, yeah. for you for you without <laughs> classes. I think this is. Uh, yeah, so we also and for for many engineers that's um, that's something that they like. Yeah, so we also have a question now. So Andreas combined in the channel within the stack mode. Okay, so I will show you how you do that. First of all, to be able to run this right now, I need to set it up so you will not be able to see anything because I will move this to the lowest setting, which I think is twelve. Okay. You can do you have your glasses on? You're gonna need it. Yeah, I have, but it's um it's not really good. Uh, yeah, now I'm. Are, are you with Maybe me? I take my. Yeah, now now I'm seeing better. Yes. Okay, so one of the <laughs> things they ask us how you can combine channels. So you just drag them on top of each other. And I think even you can do that with bus. So now I have two channels here and two channels here stacked together. It's kind of cool, isn't it? And if you yeah, un it is. yeah, and you unstuck them, like just pull uh, pull them up again. So Andreas, uh, you know this is a good feature, especially if you have. Uh, and the other thing is that what people didn't know that like, you can change the way so if you want to have channel one in the end you put channel one in the end so you can always see w what's on top i would like to have uh, like this so you can do a setup except the spectrum view because it's a separate window yes yeah and this is also now you are now you are using mouse but when you are in front of the front of your scope yeah, you can, you can use um, your finger because it has a so I can screen. remove that display and the spectrum view I can uh, re just remove those two and I have my my bursted signal the way I want maybe these two is not that bad let me just I want to have a little bit what I'm not sure what's happening here yeah, uh, I go back to I don't see anything. <laughs> Always us that doesn't see anything. Let's let's <laughs> make it bigger. That's good. Now yeah, now, now it's good. Now we're now back. It's good. So in this case, for example, we have uh, on top here we have the you know frequency, then we have our source, which is the bus, and then we have the this one. So maybe we should have. I don't know. I like this display. I love it that you can go down to the symbols here and you can see that the different, you know, A, B, 85, D, D, E. And if I run this, if I can run this, you can see it's always, should be always fi 55 in the beginning, but it's depending on which device it is. Anyway, that's, that's killing. 
so combining the stacks good i think we're done um i would love you you know i'm gonna save this uh youtube video and me and yuka we're gonna work on, on some of the links that we need to yep. provide you and thank you guys for joining if we want to do this again uh please let us know there's not too many people on here right now people are dying i guess so i would say <laughs> thank you so yeah, much i think it's lunch time yeah bye bye guys hope to see you soon again thank you bye bye